17 years ago, a vision was born. And from that vision, we got to work. It began with a few productions a year and a handful of educational programs and was nurtured by many hands into a thriving center for culture, connection, and creativity in Southwest Florida. Now, we are on the precipice of the next stage, building a permanent home that reflects the passion, tenacity, and ingenuity of all of those who dared to dream. This is the foundation we are building upon as we step into the future. The dream of a world-class professional theater that would become a home for inspiring, magical, and transformative experiences is becoming a reality. May we present the new Gulf Shore Playhouse at the Baker Theater and Education Center. Our beautiful entrance gardens will be available for all to enjoy throughout the day, as well as the perfect vista for a celebratory drink before, during, or after a performance. Welcome to our Grand Lobby, a public gathering space for our community to convene, use the free Wi-Fi, enjoy a coffee at our cafe, or simply relax. During performances, the space will transform into a bustling and lively place to enjoy an intermission beverage and discuss the art on stage. Enter the 350-seat main stage and enjoy world-class productions with perfect acoustics, comfortable seating, and a Broadway-sized stage that will open up new pathways to partner with New York producers on Broadway-bound shows. Step into the flexible black box space where the possibilities are endless. Here you might see another production, attend a meeting, or enjoy a jazz club style performance or education show. Come down to the rehearsal hall, made with fine finishes so it can be rented for small parties, weddings, or business meetings. The attached catering kitchen makes this the ideal location for any event or function. You can join us in the Founders Lounge, featuring a private bar and amenities, where VIP guests will gather to enjoy a pre-show cocktail or a small event. Students of all ages can enjoy theatrical experiences in our Education Wings classrooms. Also, in this corner of the building, you'll find a boardroom, more rehearsal space, and a roof terrace for intimate gatherings. We are thrilled you are here to raise a glass to all that we have accomplished and all that we have ahead of us. Join us as we forge ahead to raise the funds needed before we break ground later this year. This landmark theater and education center at the gateway to downtown will permanently transform the landscape of Naples and positively impact our region both culturally and economically for generations to come. Together, we are building our bright future. This is our moment. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chairman of the Board, Steve Aiken. Wow, 17 years in the making, and what a ride it has been. <clears throat> welcome to tonight's celebration. It is exciting to be among so many wonderful people who support the arts, our young people, and our community. This evening, you will hear much about being inspired by hopes, <clears throat> excuse me, dreams, tenacity, and generosity. You may also be struck, as I have been, by how an overnight success takes 17 years. <laughs> it's my honor to recognize the dignitaries with us this evening. Please hold your applause until all are announced. Commissioner Penny Taylor, Councilman Ted Blankenship, Vice Mayor Terry Hutchinson, Councilman Michael McCabe, Councilman Paul Perry. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you. The Gulf Shore Playhouse campus will serve as an iconic visual and cultural center 
located at the gateway to downtown. The Baker Theater and Education Center will be home to world-class productions that have the power to foster connections, catalyze conversations, and bridge cultural differences. The new cultural campus is iconic, elegant, and inspiring. The same hallmarks that makes this region so good to live in. I sincerely believe that by you and me investing in Gulf Shore Playhouse, we have an opportunity to support Naples' long-term growth with enriching experiences, programs, and architecture that will create, create lasting value for our region. This is probably one of the most important things that's going on for the next 20 years. Therefore, I want to tell you that I really do believe in all of you. I believe in you. shaking from, well, the idea that I'm actually physically performing live for an audience for the first time in over a year and three months. Right. When does that happen? That doesn't happen. That's a hell of a long break. <laughs> um, but terribly excited by this presentation that we just saw. I, I, it's thrilling, not only that it's going to happen, but it has been happening prior to the pandemic and through the pandemic, raising, uh, did you say $15 million, $14, 15000000 million in the last few months? You gotta have heart, miles and miles and miles of heart. Oh, it's fine to be a genius, of course, but keep that on horse before the cart. First, you gotta have heart. All you need is heart. You gotta have heart. Please welcome President of Sunshine Ace Hardware, Michael Wynn. Good evening. It is truly my privilege to be here tonight. From our business event at the Norris Center where we announced our first corporate campaign gift with, uh, from Bank of America, to the formation of the East of 41 Coalition, to the months of work in collaboration with the mayor and the city council members and city of Naples staff. A lot has been accomplished working hand in hand together. But all of these efforts really have been aimed at creating the best possible collaboration between all community stakeholders in order to have a site that would allow our residents to fully utilize uh, the, uh, the theater project and the surrounding area with a full size garage, an elegantly designed building, a cultural campus, that would elevate the Naples brand and enhance an already stellar community. In that time, I've come to see Kristen really as a tireless evangelist with an unshakable passion, zeal, and faith in her dream to build this world-class theater and education center. And make no mistake, this truly is a historic moment for our community. Now, our family has been blessed to be, have been a part of Naples history since 1938. And like so many of you, we have seen countless changes happen over the year. We really marveled at them. Now, my grandfather, Don Wynn, was once quoted as saying, I guess I'm just a farmer of sorts. Naples has been like a beautiful tree or crop. It keeps growing and producing, and it's wonderful to have been a part of that. It's hard for people to imagine what it used to be as compared to the city that it is today. That was his comment back in 1981. But our city founders, like my grandfather, recognized that a prosperous future for our city was never guaranteed. Our future success as a community and our sustained prosperity required visionary leaders who were willing to invest in our community. Leaders who would recognize the importance of responding to a dynamic and ever-changing environment. Leaders who realized that we can't push the pause button on progress, but rather we have to be committed to nurturing and guiding that progress and still be true to the unique character of our community. And really, there is no better representation of this balance of growth and investing in our quality of life than this $60 million theater and, pro and education center. This project is really so much more than just a nice place to go and be entertained for an evening. 
This is a business that will bring $20 million in annual economic activity to downtown Naples, with 80% of those funds going to local businesses that are really the heart and soul of our community. Because of Gulf Shore Playhouse, tourists will eat in our restaurants, they will stay in our hotels, they will shop in our stores. This project is also perfectly positioned to create ripple effects that will help broaden the prosperity that frankly for too long has been isolated west of 41. Theater projects like this have been proven to breathe new life in the, in the, into their surrounding neighborhoods and Gulf Shore Playhouse will be no different. So now I want you to imagine driving into Naples, see this marvelously designed building, greeting you as you enter downtown, and imagine now you're dining at an upscale open air restaurant in the wind building just a few feet to my right. <laughs> Sorry, <clears throat> selfless plug, right? Uh, so, and you're enjoying the tropical gardens as you begin your evening and you're preparing to be dazzled by Broadway quality theater. So the truth is, everyone here tonight has a vested interest in seeing this project be successful. The fact is, we're all going to be beneficiaries in one way or another, and we all have a responsibility, therefore, to invest in its success. But now, whether your investment is directly as a donor, as a patron, as a sponsor, or just as a community advocate, I hope that you leave here tonight truly as a believer and find your unique role in supporting this glittering addition to the cultural assets of our community. So let me turn my closing comments back to Kristen, her team, and the Gulf Shore Playhouse Board. Raising over $34 million on your way to 60, working with diverse stakeholders in the community, facing a global pandemic that virtually shut down your entire industry, and working hand-in-hand -hand with our city leaders to align all the codes, MOUs, resources, and property owner interests, well, that at times may have felt like you were moving mountains, but move them, you did. And when this project is complete, when the final mountain is climbed, when you and your team and your board have reached that final summit, that view is going to be spectacular. Welcome to the stage, the transformational donors to the next stage campaign, Patty and Jay Baker. It's great to be here, and we're very excited, and it's amazing to see so many wonderful people, supporters, we're excited to see you all. I want to tell you something about Patty Baker. She went to Hunter College, and she graduated with honors, and what did she major in? <laughs> Theater and art history. So, uh, I'm getting ready to marry her, so I think, happy wife, happy life. So I told her, I love theater. <laughs> and I've loved theater more every single day. <laughs> and I am proud that I love theater. So, we met Kristen Corey, and she mentioned to us that you know, she has a playhouse here. She'd like to take us to see a couple of shows. And we saw them, and they were terrific. You know, they are in a small ve venue, but it was wonderful. And that she, by herself, made all this happen, which is really amazing. She's an amazing person. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> but now, what do you want to see here? You want to see a new theater. 
That's exciting. A place that we're all proud of and a place that Naples needs and a place to see great, great entertainment. So I went home last night and talked to Patty. And, you know, what do we think? So we want to do something again a little different because it's time to get this project finished. So we're thinking, we're going to give another kind of thing, but it's going to have a little time. So from now to July 4th, Independence Day, Independence Day, we will match anything up to $10 million. And we just hope that this will carry us on. And thank you so much. How do you keep my hero? Oh my god. Is that all right? Oh my god. It's from the girl. You just keep being my heroes. So this is a really an incredible moment because what this will do will guarantee that we will have this theater here and this incredible place right here where we're sitting. And let's get this theater built and so we can be the proudest people to be here and open it up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out tonight. You all came out because you're involved or interested or donated or support theater. We thank you for that. You are all stars tonight, and now's your time to shine. Thank you. When a star is born, they possess a gift or two. One of them is this, they have the power to make a dream come true When you wish upon a star Goodness, well, that just took my breath away. Not my song, the, the uh, matching donations. That is just incredible. Talk about wishing upon a star and your dreams coming true. Um, yeah, we're climbing that mountain even as we speak, aren't we? Climb every mountain. When you have a good mountaineer leading the troop, um, it's, it's not too difficult, or it's a little easier, I should say. Um, John and I would like to share with you a, a song that I'm sure you all have heard many times, but I think it's... It can't be more appropriate than on an evening like this. The idea to follow your dreams, no matter how impossible they seem. To dream the impossible dream. To fight the unbeatable foe. To bear with unbearable sorrow to run where the brave dare not go to right the unrightable wrong to love pure and 
chased from afar to try when your arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star this is my quest to follow that star no matter how hopeless no matter how far to fight for the right without question or pause to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause and the world will be better for this for one man scorned and covered with scars still strove with his last ounce of courage to Ladies and gentlemen, our CEO and producing artistic director, Kristen Corey. Good evening. <laughs> My goodness, this is all a very tough act to follow, isn't it? Let me tell you a story. In 2004, when I decided to move to Naples from New York City, I, I had come to look for houses, or a, condos as it turned out, and I really quickly realized that there was no professional theater in Naples at that time. And so, well, I decided to start one. So, so I went to a, a, an entertainment lawyer back in New York City that I knew, and I said, okay, I'm moving to Naples, Florida. I don't know a single soul. I don't have a name for the place, and I don't have any money. <laughs> but is it too soon to start? And he said, you know, actually, it takes a year to get your 501c3. So start working on it. You need to find three board members. You need to think up a name. You need to write a mission. And then by the time you get your 501c3, which is the not-for-profit status, by the time that comes through, you'll hit the ground running. And I said, OK. And that's just what I did. So uh, I, I needed to find three board members, and like I told you, I didn't know anybody in town, so it wouldn't surprise you to find out that my realtor was my very first board member, <laughs> a guy by the name of John Kreider, uh, who's up in Sarasota now, and uh, I became the second board member, and my brother-in-law, Patrick Rickey, became the third board member. So thank you, Patrick, for believing in me before anybody else did. Thank you. And then uh, John Kreider worked for Phil Wood. He brought me to his boss, Phil Wood, who's here tonight somewhere, and I brought my presentation. My presentation was all of like a, a one-inch binder with one sheet of paper in it. And I told him this idea, this dream that I had of creating a world-class professional theater and education center and becoming a Tony Award-winning regional theater. You know, dream big. Why not, right? So I told him my idea, and he wrote me a check. And he said, Kristen, people are going to Sarasota, and they're coming to Naples, and they're looking at houses. And a lot of them are choosing Sarasota. And it's not because it's more beautiful, and it's not because it's cheaper. It's because they have more arts. So get going. And with that check, I opened a bank account, I started a website, and I made a logo, and I was off and running. So the condo that I ended up buying was right over there in Bayfront. And uh, I worked out of the condo, just myself in the back bedroom, me, myself, and I, chief cook and bottle washer. So I decided to create a one-night performance only. And I called it Three Men and a Diva. So my background was in commercial theater in New York before I came. So I pulled in three Broadway guys. And Carol Lawrence, who actually was the very first Maria in West Side Story on Broadway back in the 50s, Amazing. So the four of them come down, we create this event, it's all wonderful, and they tell me the only way, we didn't have any, we didn't have any means. I mean, even I was still a volunteer at that time. So the way that we figured out that we would sell tickets was that we actually sort of sent out invitations and asked for RSVPs, I mean, archaic. But that's what we did. And the very first RSVP that we got back was from David and Bobby Drobis, 
the very first ticket buyers who are here tonight. So thank you, thank you. And David is now one of our board members. So thank you so much for all your support over these years. Someone at the chamber recommended I call this guy called Bob Harden, the radio guy, and ask Bob Harden if he would interview me and one of the actors for his radio show. And he readily agreed. And I, uh, his, his board op told me that he used to be on the board of the Huntington Theater, which is a regional theater in Boston. And I said, hey, Bob, do you want to have lunch? And I asked him, of course, to be on the board. And he said, oh, no. I came down here to golf. I came down to retire and relax. I have no interest in this. And, and, and he said, but tell me your story. So I told him my idea, my one-page idea about the Tony Award-winning regional theater. And he said, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm going to do it anyway. And he said, then I'm going to help you. And he became our board chairman from 2005 to 2017. <laughs> and I mean this when I say, those of you who know Bob Harden, he can't be with us because he's doing, uh, he just got some back surgery. Um, but I do mean this when I say, if it weren't for Bob Harden, we would still be selling cookies on the street because he got us through those really lean years um, when it really, we were very fragile. <laughs> and um, so there were challenges for sure. Sometimes it was like feeling like Sisyphus pushing the rock up the hill. But the one thing Bob and I always said to each other was we knew that Gulf Shore Playhouse had an angel on its shoulder because somehow we always came through the tough stuff. And, and we continue to come through the tough stuff. So I, um, I am grateful to Bob and I'm, and I'm grateful to all of you because um, when the, the bad times happened, I would actually go out onto the back balcony of, ba of my condo right over there and I would close my eyes and I would visualize, you know, back then it was called Grand Central, ironically, right, for the New Yorker, it was called Grand Central Station. Do you remember Grand Central Station here? Abandoned weeds growing up through the parking lot. You know, I mean, it was just really awful. And I would stand there and I would close my eyes and I would visualize a theater growing up from the land, which by, by which I mean this very land. 17 years later, I am proud to have unveiled our plans for this beautiful, the Baker Theater and Education Center. And, 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 and so this, where you are sitting right now, you are in our lobby. These are the gardens. These are the beautiful tropical gardens. Behind you is our main stage theater with, with a Broadway-sized stage where when we do Singing in the Rain, there will actually be rain. <laughs> when we do Peter Pan, Peter Pan will fly. You know, it's just going to be amazing. And not only that, but we'll be able to be doing Singing in the Rain in one stage and some controversial, thought-provoking new work in the other stage um, while, we're, while we're feeding and nourishing and, and caring for our kids in the back in the education wing. Speaking of our kids, Cadence Schultz. She's really something, right? So I'm going to ask you now to close your eyes and imagine. I'm going to close my eyes with you. Imagine yourself walking into the new Gulf Shore Playhouse at the Baker Theater and Education Center on opening night. You walk up the grand staircase and into the Aiken Grand Lobby, and this Excitement is palpable. And what does it sound like? You can hear the voices buzzing and everyone's excited and glasses are clinking and there's music playing. What are you dressed like? How do you feel? What are you excited to see? Is it chorus line? Is it singing in the rain? Is it the new next musical like Jersey Boys or Hamilton or Come From Away that we're going to be creating with Ken Davenport or some other producer, some other Broadway producer getting it ready to send to Broadway? How does it feel? I want you to imagine for a moment that we are creating this together. Now open your eyes. And we're going to put all of this beautiful the stuff that we just visualized into a little pink bubble. Everybody put, your own, put it all in your own little pink bubble. And then I'm going to take all of our visualizations, and I'm going to put it into one big giant bubble, and we're going to send it off to the universe together. And right as we speak, that is gathering energy. And that is what many minds together can do. We can create the future. So it's so exciting to me to be able to thank so many people tonight, our wonderful board of directors. I, I, I don't know about you, but being a theater company and coming through a pandemic is not so fun. 
And uh, we came through it with flying colors. At a certain moment, we were the only theater performing on stage in the country. To all of you who believed in this little dream, I thank you. We did this together, handshake by handshake, meeting by meeting, and heart to heart. We took what was at one time an impossible dream, and we turned this dream into a dream that is becoming a reality. And I know that very soon, when you're sitting here again, you're going to be sitting under our roof. Now, we are ready. We are on the precipice. We are ready to spread our wings, and we are ready to leap, and we are ready to fly. And together, we will be successful because this is our moment. This is the moment when all I've done, all of the dreaming, scheming, and screaming becomes one. This is the day. See it sparkle and shine. Yeah. Hey.